Hey guys, Bondo here. We're gonna be installing some radiant heat tubing inside this old house here and up in this floor joists. Um, this is a retrofit. This is house was built in the 70s. I have a um, water heater over here, propane fired. It's a direct vent unit that I'm gonna be heating this unit, this uh, house with. And uh, I wanna show you how to install the tubing in the floor joists and uh, I got a method that's pretty cheap and easy to do. I'm going to show you how you do it. And uh, basically, it's going to cost me nothing because I got a lot of the materials um, left over from jobs. And I'll show you how I did it and how you can save yourself some money. And you can have radiant heat for real cheap. Don't need no plates, none of that stuff, none of that fancy stuff. Um, water flows, heats the space, and you get heat on your floors. Stay tuned. Hey, Ro. Ro. You gonna help with the tubing, buddy? You gonna help Dad with the tubing today? Huh? Huh? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Okay, guys. So what we're doing here, sorry about that light. Um, we drilled some holes already down through my floor joists. This is the space. So my floor joists are running this way. So my boiler system is over here. This is how that looks. It's kind of a mess right now, but this is the heat unit. This is just a domestic hot water heater. This is the pumps and everything. I got just some cheap copper manifolds coming off of here that I made. I bought this unit. Here's the company I bought it from. I usually make these up, but this one was a lot quicker for me was all done up. It's got the control box and everything on it. So it's got three pumps and each pump is represents a zone. So that's how it's done. This pump right here is all hooked up to my garage. I got some, just one line going in the garage. It's a small garage and uh, that works really well. It's in the concrete. We poured a new floor in there and then I got another zone. I'll show you. We did some in the wall heat um, with this, this pump right uh, here. This one down here is doing some in the wall heat. But right now we're gonna focus on putting tubing up in this floor. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Like I said, the first thing we did guys is drilled two holes along this edge right there. I just came like 10 inches off the wall and I come a foot over from that. And I drilled these uh, well, inch and a quarter, inch and a half holes. And these joists are two foot on center, which is going to make my life a little easier. Um, not going to have as much tubing as I would if it was 16 on center. But this house is super insulated and I've already heated it with uh, hardly anything. It will heat this house. So this will just be extra heat in the floors. So I'm not worried about it. But normally uh, your joists would be 16 on center, which would give you more tubing in the floor and uh, a little bit harder to, to pull the tubing through the holes and stuff. But um, So that's that. I drilled these holes all the way across the house, all the way down to the end. And we put these blocks in, guys. These are just scraps of lumber that we put in here. I put them about every four feet, all the way across up in the bays here. See them? And that's what we're going to attach the tubing to. And the reason I do that, I don't like to put the tubing up against the floor here with those plates because down the road, if somebody tries to do some flooring or something or fasten something to the floor, they're going to hit the tubing. So there's another one. And then I put one at the end just to hold the end. You can see we insulated the perimeter, the rim joist with the styrofoam board. You want to do that too. You want to put the foam board, two inches of foam board, spray foam around it. Get your rim joists all done before you put this tubing in. A lot less difficult. So that's that. I got the holes drilled. I got these blocks in here. So now I'm going to show you how we run these loops of tubing from that. Not this manifold. This here is, uh, this one here is just my uh, domestic water. So my, I got to run it from this, this boiler system over here. So I'm going to show you how to do that real easy. I got the tubing, like I said, the blocks of wood were free. They're just scraps. And uh, I'm going to do this and it's not going to cost me hardly anything. 
I'll show you how we fasten it up. Let's do it. Okay, so I got my tubing here, guys. This is half inch oxygen barrier tubing. Uh, company's Blue Fin. I get it from uh, Supply House. I get it online. So I'm starting at my boiler system here, which is kind of in the middle of this house. Depending on where your boiler system is, is where you're gonna start. So what I'm gonna do is start here. I'm gonna feed through my holes. I'm gonna start with the outermost hole furthest away from the rim joist. I'm gonna run down and I'm gonna come back through the other hole to my header right here. I'm gonna hook it to this header here. I gotta take these lines off. These are just temporary, just so I could turn the heat on, temporary. But so I'm gonna run down the furthermost holes away from the rim joist. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna pull it back and go to my header, that's step one. Got my tubing here. If you got a uns one of them coils, uh, it would be helpful, I don't have one today, but an un unspooler for the tubing. I'm just gonna run it. Just kind of stretch it out, get the memory out of it. Okay guys, this is what I just did. Fed my line here through, like I said, the outermost hole goes down through, a lot of tube in here, sorry. Down through, down through, get to the end. I looped it like that and I stuck it in the closer hole to the rim joist. And then I threaded that down through, as you can see, back to my boiler, my header. This is my header. And I got enough tubing here, well, over here. I left myself enough tubing so I could plug it in to my header. And then I'm gonna zip tie everything together when I get it done. But that's how I started this run. And now all I gotta do is take this tubing right here and just pull it. I'm gonna be pulling from the manifold, or from the coil, pulling it like this, pulling it and making this loop longer so it goes all the way down to the end of the building. Once you get that first one done, then I'm gonna show you the next step. I'm gonna basically pull this tubing, which is gonna not pull the end that goes to the header, but the end that goes to the coil. And I keep unrolling that coil so you don't form a loop of memory on the tubing. If you had two guys, you could have one guy managing that and helping you pull it. But right now I'm working by myself. Terry's up top putting the, these blocks in for the next level that we're working on. Okay guys, we got our first loop in. Here it is. Going down through, I had to cut some holes and then blocking. I just drilled a couple holes and took my fine tool and egged it out so I could sneak the tubing through there. And there it goes all the way down to the end of the run there above the panel box. So I just kept pulling the tubing until I could feed it. This is how I fasten it guys. I'll show you these clamps. Let me show you what they are. This is what they, excuse me, what they are. It's a one hole strap for a conduit, electrical steel conduit. That's what they look like. They work real good. You only need one screw in them. They hold real good. 
that tubing's not going anywhere and they're pretty cheap so i like to do things cheap if i can and that's that for the first run now i am going to pull this loop right here in a counterclockwise fashion and i'm going to take the tubing and twist it like this and pull it this way and that's going to feed my second loop and this still this one furthest this way it goes back and connects to my coil still so as i pull i'm going to be taking material off that coil so that's how i'm going to do it for my second loop okay guys i got my first run here done what i did was did five of these bays i'm gonna this this uh downstairs i divided into three and the loops are a little under 200 feet so i'm one two three four and sorry about that light five bays i ran it down here I got coming out of uh, supply right on back in here I got supply and I got return here and I crimped them together onto my header these are just spares so I just looped them from supply right to to the header just looped them around they're just extras in case I need to heat down the road and this is gonna be a separate zone up in the split level part but that's how I did it, guys. Get another look at it. Just like that. The end looks like this. A little tabs holding it together. Down through there. We just snuck them right through them bridging right there. And there it is. I'm gonna do, like I said, that's one loop, not a zone, that's just one loop, and then I'll do another loop, take me over to here, and then I'll do a third loop. We'll finish the basement. That's how we're gonna do it. Real cheap. Um, kind of a pain to string the tubing in there, but um, doesn't cost much. Got your nice little holders holding it down from the ceiling. So Terry is up here putting blocks in this section. You can see he's got these old pieces of two by four. That he's putting down through there. This is the split level section. Terry right now putting them in. I'll show you what we're using. We're just using some junk that we got from a lumber yard, local lumber yard, buddy of mine. These are just stuff that you get for free. Uh, the lumber comes in on it. That's what we're using. So it can cost us nothing for the little pieces of two by three we're using. It's got the chop saw set up, cutting them right there. Whatever we don't use, we're gonna burn in the wood stove downstairs. Right, Ro? Hey, buddy. You're not much of a helper today, bud. You're not helping too good. Just lazy, lazy, laying around, being a bum. Okay, guys, I got all the tubing done. Um, did it in one day in this lower half. Here's everything coming into the boiler. And now all the ceiling's done. You can kind of see it all in there. My buddy Greg stopped in and helped me do the last loop because it was a little more challenging because we had different lengths. Like this house has a step in it right here. Oh, light. It steps back there. And then it does the same at this entranceway. Where this entranceway is. You got this. Look that light. So it's shorter here than it is here. It goes down to the end there. But it's not fun, guys. I can tell you putting the tubing in is not fun, but it'll work really good. And this is a good way to do it. 
save yourself some money. I'm going to put more tubing in tomorrow. I'll try to get a little more footage for you. Okay, guys, I got the house all, um, all the tubing run in the house. This is how I did it. I came up through the basement here with all my lines. They all run through here. And you can see how we crossed over and ran it down right on our blocking. That's what she looks like. And a little clip's holding it like that. Sorry about the light. So there it is, guys. That's how we did it. I did the same way in my house and it works real good, so it's already I've already proven that it works. You don't need to tube one up against the floor. I mean it works either way. Take you downstairs. This is everything hooked up. Everything comes through from the upstairs right in here. And all my pumps are hooked up to my headers that I made. Everything's there. I got these extra loops down here. I got like three extra loops. If I want to add heat somewhere, I can. They just run from here over to there. I think I just got to finish wiring up the box here. Zone control box, pump control box. And there's my unit propane. HTP, that's a um, direct vent, direct vent out that PVC, 96% efficient. And there we are, there's the system. Okay guys, so I'll show you what I'm doing here with the radiant heat project. Basically what I'm doing is, there's my tubing again, like I showed you, all tied up. I got this uh, fan fold insulation board and it's silver on one side and it's um, got a pattern on the other side. I'll show you a piece of it. Here's a piece of it. It's just fan fold insulation. So silver on one side. So I'm putting the silver side up like this and then I'm putting another layer with the silver side down. So, so about a quarter inch thick. So we're end up with a about a half inch insulation up here. And I'm putting fern strips across the studs like that. And I'm just nailing them up there with a, um, this nail gun right here. And that's gonna be my nailers for, I'm gonna put metal ceiling up here. Some corrugated metal, um, galvanized. And that's gonna be the look here that we're going after. But this insulation board is gonna force the heat up. So um, this is way cheaper than that bubble wrap stuff. Um, this fan fold stuff is. I can only get so much of this foil face fan fold. So I bought some from the box store here and we're putting this up. I got one layer up so far. That doesn't have the reflective barrier on it. So probably won't work as good, but I don't know the house right now is uh, maintaining temperature really good. This room I'm in right now, the thermostat says 64. I go upstairs in the bedrooms, it's 64. So as soon as I put this up and I stuck my head up in there um, while the heat was going and it was real warm up in there in this cavity right here, it was really warm. So it's holding the heat and we haven't put the gal galvanized metal up yet either. So um, I think it's gonna work really good. So it's just an idea how to do this radiant heat. Um, inexpensively, hate the word, use the word cheap, but um, this is a lot cheaper or inexpensive than uh, other methods of doing this. So, and I will follow up on how this is working, but so far it's working great and I'm not even finished. So, because the boiler is on, I was putting this up there. I could feel the heat on the, the tubing. So, right, Rotor? He's sleeping. What are you doing, bud? Bro, what you doing, buddy? sleeping all right guys i'm gonna get back to it give you more info on how this thing's working